Hi, I'm Ann Campbell, and today I'm going to talk about the key features of SonarCube 9.7. In 9.6, we brought you faster Java PR analysis with the addition of an analysis cache, and I said at the time that there would be more to come in future versions. Well, in 9.7, we've delivered on that with faster JavaScript and TypeScript analysis of PRs and faster COBOL analysis. Again, we did this with the analysis cache, which means that unchanged files don't have to be reanalyzed. For large JavaScript type scripts, we see PR analysis improvement of up to 80%, with an average of 40% improvement. For Python, we've added lots of rules for you this time. Let's start with the test rules. So we've got three rules that are fairly common, and then five rules around tests that are unique to Sonar. So we've got some on test skipping, test execution, and whether or not the assertions in your tests are actually reachable. We've also added three new path-sensitive bug detection rules in commercial editions. And for all users, we've added rules to help you use the AWS CDK properly nine rules for encryption at rest and in transit, four rules around public access network and firewalls, and three rules for permissions and access control. And in commercial editions, we've added taint analysis of inline JavaScript TypeScript lambdas in YAML files. Moving into the cloud, let's go to GitHub and look at this test project. Another thing we've added is in the security space, if I go to code scanning, you'll see that we're now reporting vulnerabilities on your projects directly in GitHub. If I click through, you'll see that we have the same highlighting, the same messaging, and the same rule description that's available in the UI. But we're also working on improving the UI. So in 9.7, for most Java and c -sharp Tain analysis rules, we have deeply enhanced the rule descriptions to make them more helpful, more useful, more educational. And we've also enhanced the compliant and non-compliant code examples to highlight the differences between the two so that you can more clearly tell exactly what needs to change to make your non-compliant code more compliant. Staying with security, we've added a security report in this version for OWASP ASVS. There are three levels to the ASVS, and we report against all three of them. Now for admins, we've added a number of goodies this time. First, the long-awaited announcement message. So as a global admin, I can now broadcast a message to all users. I can set this up ahead of time, so I've saved the message. If I refresh the page, it doesn't display yet because I haven't toggled it on. Once I do toggle it on, then it displays to all users. And let's just turn this back off and see that it goes away. All right, moving on. We've also made uh, SAML integration easier to set up. We've added a test configuration button and we've enhanced the documentation on SAML integration to make this much easier to understand what you need to do and what's going on. Another thing we've changed in this version is telemetry. Previously, it was sent once a week in an aggregated fashion. We've updated that to send once every 24 hours with granular data. As you see, we're sending anonymized IDs and no identifiable information here. And speaking of anonymous, let's talk about personally identifiable information. So here I have some issues assigned to Alex G. And in this version, we've added the ability to anonymize user records. So if I deactivate Alex G, I have the ability to delete the user's personal information. So his record is retained in the database, but anonymized, so that now if I go back to those issues, I'll see an anonymized ID here. Now it's worth noting that while we've anonymized the user record, we have not removed the blame data that was retrieved from the source control management system. So there are some vestiges here. And that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for watching.